In today's video, we are after an invasive species known as the blue catfish. Today, we are down on the Patuxent River. This is the largest and longest river that flows throughout Maryland. It is 115 miles long and covers over 900 square miles of watershed. And we're gonna be using some light tackle gear today to target these invasive blue catfish. These are six foot, medium light, precision cast, crappy rods. So we have them spooled up with some eight pound lines. So let's see how big of a fish today we can land on a six foot crappie rod with eight pound line. Let's go get on them. chocolate milk. Here we go, y'all. We arrived at our first spot. We're in about 15 foot of water. Let's go ahead and drop that anchor on down. All right. Yeah, she ain't going nowhere. <laughs> All right, let's cut this bad boy off. All righty. Make all this slack. Put that down. All right. If you go out on your boat and your gear is entangled up within the first five minutes, you definitely ain't no fisherman, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> it's always some type of tangle somewhere. Okay, well, that one ain't too bad. I've seen a lot, a lot worse. Cool beans. All right, here's our setup for today. We have a six foot medium light precision cast crappie rod. We have some eight pound line on there. And here's my rig. We have a three-way swivel with a clip. We have about two ounces here. We have a steel leader. We have my float. We have some beads. And we have an eight-aught circle hook right there. And today's bait, we're gonna be using that good old strawberry jello chicken. One of my favorite baits to use because it's very cheap. It's very easy to make. And the fish down here absolutely love it. So we're gonna get some nice, big old hefty piece on there. Plus this one's been 
this this uh, chicken I made it was a couple days ago, so it's been marinating in the refrigerator. So it definitely has a, a, a smell to it. I can't say if it's a good smell or a bad smell, but <laughs> I will say it does have a smell. <laughs> All right, let's get, a, let's get a nice cast out there. All right, around the bottom. Let me make sure that drag's a little loose because when I'm fishing this line of line, I want the fish to be able to take it and run with it because if my drag's too tight, I'm just going to break this eight pound line pretty quick. So I want to make sure that drag is pretty loose. So if the fish takes it, it can just run with it. He also makes sure my reel handle's on there tight too. <laughs> We're doing all, all the precautions today. All the precautions. Rather be safe than sorry. That's for certain. Second cast going out. Boom. All right, we're on the bottom. Same thing with this one. Make sure my uh, my reel handle's tight. <laughs> Make sure my drag is loose. All right, let's let her go. See what we can do, y'all. All, All righty, see how long it takes to get our first one. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. It's a nice day today. It's, uh, it's a little sunny out, but it's still pretty warm and the wind isn't blowing too hard, so. Let's see what we can do at our first spot. Hopefully get us a big old catfish. The Patuxent River is considered to be a brackish river considering it's a tributary of the Chesapeake Bay. I've caught rockfish back here. I've caught white perch. I've caught catfish. I've caught crappie. I've caught bass. I've caught snakehead. I've caught carp. I've caught a bunch of different style of fish that live back in here. Oh, here you go, bite. Fish on. We got a runner. Fish on. Fish on, y'all. Holy moly. <laughs> right when I was talking. We're hooked up on our very first fish, and it feels like a pretty decent one as well. This rod's a medium light, ultra light rod, so it's kind of hard to tell how big it is, but it feels decent. Here it comes. Let's go, y'all. We were not here very long either. I'd say probably about 10 minutes. 10, 15 minutes, I'd say. We got our first fish. Look at that, a little channel catfish. Look at that. A little channel cat. We do get channel cats back in here as well. We do, but mostly we catch a lot of blue catfish, but every once in a while we'll, we'll get a channel cat or we'll get a little bullhead catfish to come running through. All right, let's get this beautiful channel catfish back in the water we're not doing any keeping today we're just going to do all catch and release just like that he's gone all right y'all we're doing pretty good so far we're one for one we had one bite and we caught one fish so far comment down below for me what is your biggest catfish what type of catfish was it and where you were from my biggest catfish was a 43 pound flathead catfish that i caught when i was in new mexico fishing with muddy river catfishing I'll have his channel linked down below. Make sure y'all go check out his channel. He gets some ginormous flathead catfish in it. I went out there with him and he put me on my biggest catfish ever. Other baits that I will use on this river to catch catfish besides chicken, I'll use white perch, bluegill, carp. We've, we've used shad. I mean, these fish aren't really too picky. They're willing to eat whatever that puts off a really strong scent and that is easy for them to find on the bottom. One thing I haven't done on this river yet that I really want to do is I want to go back on the western branch and try to catch some white perch and some bluegill and come back here and use them as live bait for some big blue catfish because I think live bait would do very, very well back here, but I've never tried live bait before for catfish on this part of the river. I've done it before in the Potomac River and other rivers like that, but I've never tried it on the Patuxent this far down on the river, so might be able to produce that. 40, 50, 60 pounder. My biggest blue catfish I've ever caught on this river alone was 
35 pounds. That's my biggest catfish I've ever caught on the Patuxent River on the same stretch that we're fishing today. And we weren't, we're not too far away from the exact spot where I caught it at, or maybe, maybe 20, 30 yards away. That was a big fish too. That was back in February of last year. It was awesome. My biggest fish I've ever caught on one of these before was a 10 pound carp. And that thing put up a really crazy fight. I have the video linked on my YouTube channel if y'all wanna go check it out. But we were just using these to catch bluegill and then all of a sudden a carp came by and picked it up and started running with it and I landed it. And it was such a crazy fight, it was so intense. So I'm gonna have that video linked on my YouTube if y'all wanna check it out as well. Let's go ahead and pull this sucker up. All right. It's always a good feeling when you pull your anchor and it comes up easy. <laughs> You're not snagged on something too bad. Especially on this river, there's so much structure and stuff down there. It's really easy to get my anchor caught up on stuff. Let's go ahead and fire this baby up. Make sure in neutral. All right. Alrighty. All right, we arrived at our second spot. Let's go ahead and drop anchor. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get some fresh bait on there. Alright, we got some fresh bait going out. We're fishing a little bit shallower this time. Right here, we're in about, I think about seven and a half to eight foot of water right here. So a little bit shallower. We'll see what's going on up the river. We're gonna put this one to the left, right here by this structure that's breaking the current. Damn, right there was perfect. And this one we're gonna put to the right, right out in the middle of the channel. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that chicken back in the water. Chum up, chum up the water a little bit, get these fish fired up. I know I'm fired up, I'm ready for a big fish on this little rod. Ready for a big old monster. Alrighty, make sure that drag is loose. Alright, let's let her down, see what we can do baby. See what we can do. The reason why this is one of my favorite spots to fish is because of all the structure that's around. To my left, we have a big old concrete cylinder which puts off a big break in the current which allows the fish to kind of hang out and relax. And then to my right over here. As you can see, kind of sticking out the water a little bit, there is some old wood posts that start from there and go about 50 to 100 yards up that way and also creates structure and breaking the current for the fish to kind of hang out and congregate and kind of just relax right here in this deeper pool. So, I'm excited. I love fishing this little pocket of the river right here. Caught some very, very nice fish in the past. Blue catfish have been wreaking havoc on our ecosystem. They eat anything from blue crabs, the mussels, the clams, oysters, white perch, shad, and all those species have seen a decrease in number due to the blue catfish absolutely destroying the population of them, destroying all their nests, destroying all their beds, causing havoc throughout the whole, our whole entire ecosystem. Our bays and our rivers are completely filled with them. 
And a couple years back, they cut open a belly of one and found a half dozen blue crabs in it. And that's how they were to figure out, okay, well, this is what's causing, or not the only reason, but this is definitely a reason in the decrease of the blue crab population is definitely because of the blue catfish. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a photo up right here of one of my biggest blue catfish that I've ever caught out here on the Patuxent River. I don't know if you got one on or not, I might have got off. Okay, it popped off. It's the first one that we missed today, y'all. I don't think he was all the way on there. Might have just been pulling on the bait. Little pontoon discovery boat out here, showing the people the water and everything was going on. It's pretty cool, y'all.
Chompy out. The tide is definitely going out. Oh, that structure that I was telling y'all about earlier all the uh, wood posts and stuff coming up the tide is definitely starting to go out like I said this being the Patuxent River it is considered a tidal river so there are tides that come back and through here and as you can see right now we are currently getting into low tide all those posts were underwater when I was showing y'all earlier but now you can see them very clearly Alrighty. All right, we are back over here where we caught that channel catfish at. We were right about right in here. So we're gonna go up a little bit further and drop anchor and try to fish this spot again because we didn't have any other luck at the other spots. We had a couple bites, but that was really it. So we we're returning to where we caught that channel cat at and we're gonna see if there's anything else that's lurking around and then we'll go from there. All right. All right, we just got our anchor deployed and secured. Let's go ahead and get some fresh bait in the water and see what's down there lurking. I'm surprised no blue cats today, y'all. I'm very shocked. I was more surprised when I saw the channel catfish than anything because I haven't caught one of them down here in probably at least like a year or so, at least. But that's just how fishing is. You never know what you're going to catch unless you get out there and you for sure ain't going to catch nothing sitting on the couch. Send her on out. That'd be real cool if we catch just another channel cat. I'd be two in the same day. I've never done that before. Anytime I've ever caught one before, it's only been like one out of like, I'll catch 15, 20 blue cats and maybe one of them might be a channel. I've never had a day like today where all I caught was a channel and out of blue. Very weird. Very weird. I'll tell you that right now. It's weird. Is that a bite already? Or is that thing? Okay, just hitting the bottom. <laughs> I was, I was confused for a second. I'm like, that kind of looks like a fish, but it was just dragging on the bottom. Alrighty, let's see what we can do. That was a pretty good bite when it's at right here. I'm just gonna hold it. It might be a small one. As soon as he pulls it again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reel right. I'm gonna pull him. I think I got him. I'm not sure. If I did, he's really small. Nah, I missed him. All right, I'll put it back out there. But look at that bait. He was definitely down there sucking on it. Almost got it off the hook. I kind of figured it was a small one just by the way it kept playing with it. It wasn't taking it all the way down. It was just kind of hitting it and letting it go. So I figured it was just a little baby one down there. We're looking for that big boy. The grandpa, grandma. That's what we're looking for.
If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure please smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave me a comment down below. We didn't catch our target species today, but at least we did catch at least one channel catfish, and we didn't get skunked, and we had a good old time out here in the water. We had a few other bites as well, could have been small blue catfish, but that's just how fishing goes. You go out there, you catch whatever's biting, and today, the channel catfish were biting, y'all. So, I'll see you on the next video. I love y'all. Cowboy out. All right, y'all, we made it off the water safe and sound. All thanks and glory be to God. I love you all so much. Make sure to go check out some of my other videos for me. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And don't forget, tight lines, fresh bait, catch them up. See y'all later.